Tonight, a special ABC 15 investigation. What happens when police officers lie? Make up evidence, make bad arrests. When you have an officer who's willing to lie, the entire system breaks down. But what if the system is already broken? Prosecuting people isn't a game. Putting people in prison is not a game. That's why we have Brady. We've spent a year investigating problems with Arizona's Brady lists, the lists prosecutors use to track lying and criminal cops. We found the lists are missing officers. The process missing basic accountability. And as a result, juries are missing the truth. After Minneapolis, the police killing of George Floyd, protests are sweeping the nation. The calls for reform have never been louder. Now, police and prosecutors say they're ready to listen, make changes, but can we trust them to actually follow through? Tonight, our investigation shows what happens when we trust police to police themselves. We call it full disclosure. Here's why we're doing it. In 1963, the Supreme Court ruled in a landmark case, Brady v. Maryland, Police and prosecutors are required to give all evidence, even if it hurts their case, like if the officers involved have been caught lying in the past or have criminal records. That information has to be disclosed. But it's been almost 60 years, and Arizona still doesn't have it right. This is Arizona's full Brady list, 1,400 law enforcement officials since 2000. I just wonder how many cases they've touched that might have questions. Hundreds of thousands of cases? I yeah. mean, I mean, potentially more. At least 220 still on the job, more than 100 in Phoenix alone, and dozens of new officers get added every year. No one gave us this list. We made it by obtaining tens of thousands of pages of records, plus information and data from every Arizona county. There's no centralized Brady database in the state. Despite the 1963 ruling, the oldest county Brady lists go back just 20 years. Some counties didn't even start keeping them until this decade. You have 15 different county attorneys making... Uh, All different decisions. And, and with no standards. These problems, the heart of everything you're about to see. No set statewide standards. No statewide list. Every county can keep their own list in their own way. No one posts it publicly. A lying cop is extremely dangerous because that officer will routinely come into court, look the judge in the eye, look the jurors in the eye, and lie. And the problem is, is that the public, you know, who make up the jury, and even judges, right, they want to believe the officers. The Phoenix officer you see in the stand is a documented liar, but his history of dishonesty never disclosed before a trial that put a grandmother in prison. It's a case revealing another major problem. No real punishment for police and prosecutors if they hide or withhold Brady material. It was worse than a nightmare. I mean, uh... This is Francis Salazar. I, it's hard to put it to words. Especially when your future rests on the words of a liar. <laughs> you have to sit there and just like watch it. You have no choice. Nobody should have to go through that. Her case began in Phoenix in 2013. Francis and a friend pulled over. She was the passenger and they had borrowed another friend's car. The temporary license plate was expired. When the officer searched the car, he found a crack pipe that he claimed was wedged down between a seat and the center console. The officer was Phoenix PD's Anthony Armour. In court, he gave damning testimony. She admitted uh, it was hers and that she knew that it was crack inside the pipe. She admitted that the pipe with the crack cocaine in it was hers? Yes. That's your testimony? Yes. Was the pipe yours? No. Did you admit to him that the pipe I was I did yours? not. So he lied? He lied. But Francis has a history of addiction. Do you think it's something like, who's going to believe her? I, I do. I truly believe that him putting that charge on me had a lot to do with, you know, my past offense. And I'm, I'm recovered. People can change. And a lot of people don't fight the system because, let's face it, if you take it to trial, you're facing a lot more time. And it was a very scary thing, 6 to 15 years. Armour wasn't wearing a body camera, so it was Francis's word versus the officers. The jury believed him. I do find the defendant as to count two guilty. Francis was convicted, sentenced to six years in prison. But what Francis, her attorneys, and the jury didn't know, Officer Anthony Armour is a documented liar with a history of a false arrest. Unexcusable. Unjust. Chris Duran and Ben Rundle are Francis's attorneys. When an officer does something wrong, the public has to a hope that the police department investigates it, that the police department sustains it, that they then turn it over to the county attorney's office, and then that the county attorney's office turns it over to attorneys like you. That seems like a lot of steps that we have to trust them 
without having anyone else in place to oversee that they actually do it. That's absolutely right, and that's the problem. Officer Armour's history of dishonesty never disclosed to them before trial. Instead, six months after trial, the attorneys say the prosecution quietly tucked a one-sentence notice in the old case file. Quote, the state has disclosed newly discovered evidence. So they stuck information about his untruthfulness, his dishonesty, his lying, in a now dead old case file after the trial is over without telling anybody. Yeah, and, and not even that. They didn't even put his conduct or his, his untruthful acts in the court file. It was just a notice of disclosure. For an incident a year before Francis's trial, Phoenix police sustained five allegations against Armour. He unlawfully entered an apartment, falsely arrested a woman who lived there, lied to his supervisor regarding the circumstances, lied in his incident report, and after a sergeant told him to release the woman from custody, he had her sent to jail anyway. Armour was suspended for 80 hours, but not fired. That should have been enough right there. And he continued to work. He continued to be a police officer. We'll return to Francis's disturbing trial, but first after the break, we'll take you inside a chaotic police department filled with Brady List officers.